morning. God morning to you. That feeling of trying to remember what you were about to Google. Or that feeling of trying to stay sleepy when you have to get up in the middle of the night. Or that feeling of trying to remember what you were just anxious about. What you were worried about. You were worried about something, but what was it? That attempt to recall, to go back to, to hold on to. That same innate practice, but used for good, used for God. I had to get up in the middle of the night to pee because I drank a lot of watermelon juice yesterday after five o'clock. I don't know what I was on. (laughs) And I remember trying to remain sluggish and groggy to and from the bathroom. When I'm practicing the presence of God, I'm trying to remain aware of his presence to and from everywhere. That's how Brother Lawrence prayed. A monk that lived in the 1600s in France, he'd given up all of his intercessory prayers to focus his attention on remaining in God's holy presence. Harry Maesiah said, clear your mind of dogmatic theological debris and let in the fresh healing waters of direct perception. Attune yourself to the active inner guidance The divine voice has the answer to every dilemma of life. But how do you hear it? How do you know it's not just your thoughts? The same way you know that the person on the other line is not just somebody, that it's your favorite person, the one who doesn't have to announce who they are when they begin speaking. They just say, hey, and you immediately know without even looking at the phone. Think about pre-caller ID days. You automatically know Hey, from your mom. Hey, from your dad. Hey, from your brother or your sister or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You know their voice because you spend time with them. You know when God is speaking to you and he speaks to you within and without. God speaks to me through people. My dad in 2018 came to me with podcasting equipment he had secured because he just knew that was what I was to do. And in 2018, I'm like, dad, I'm a writer, not a talker. And I have nothing to talk about, not regularly. And here we are. God is always speaking. But since you're also always speaking, telling it, him, her, what you need, what you want, what's wrong, you can't hear. You're afraid that God is going to say something you don't want to hear, but you're going to have to experience something you don't want to experience. Chris Field says, if you have never heard God speak to you, you can be quiet right now and listen to him. He gave you special ears inside your heart that are made for hearing him. He has so much to tell you. Most people only listen with their outside ears. But once you are good at listening with your inside ears, you'll hear how much God has to say. It will be the sunshine of your heart. Aditya Hridayam Punyam Sarvshatru Banashanam. Remember that mantra from the Ramayana that Ramdas practiced, helped us practice. All evil vanishes from life for him who keeps the sun in his heart. How do you keep the sun in your heart? First, you can invite him in. Even though he's already there, you can sit down and formally become aware of him there. You could say, God, please come into my heart. Help me with everything in my life. I am sorry for not turning to you, for not listening for you, for not trusting you. I want to have a new life with you. Wash my heart with your love and joy and live inside me. I give you all of me. Please give me all of you and be my friend forever. Amen. Remember Victor Thompson, who I interviewed last week? The song hit number one on the gospel charts this week and number three on another one. He said God is his best friend. He talks to him constantly. There's a constant communion, a constant conversation. Brother Lawrence said the same thing. And he said often the conversation is silence on both sides just the awareness of the presence. Chris Field says, if you've never felt God's love inside you, ask him to help you. Then be quiet for a moment. 
It may be as gentle as a butterfly kiss. It may be as quiet as a ladybug, but as you listen, you will recognize his whisper inside you. You may feel peace. This is the beginning of enjoying God. He doesn't always speak in words. Sometimes he speaks in a picture, a feeling, a song, but he always speaks with love. In Psalm 29, 4, it says, the voice of the Lord is full of power. The voice of the Lord has a noble sound. It's real. And it gives you real confidence, the kind that's not rooted in ego, but in your real self. It is real love. Osho said you can only be non-possessive, non-jealous, when a different kind of love has arisen in you, which is no more dependent, which needs nobody, which simply goes on overflowing. If somebody partakes good, you are grateful, but if nobody partakes very good, you are alone and absolutely happy, absolutely full. Spend all day today talking to God, to this love inside, keeping this love activated. It's a permission slip to stay aware of this love if you're constantly turning towards it. Hear God, I'm taking these steps because I love you. I'm walking because I love you. Hear God, I'm eating this delicious meal, not for me, but for you. I'm eating this because I love you. I'm helping my child with homework because I love you. I'm driving this car out of my love for you. Hear God, I'm doing this for you because I love you. Everything from brushing your teeth to scrolling Instagram, even though it may sound silly to say, here, God, I'm scrolling right now because I love you. Those words remind you to feel his love. When you're feeling that love, you scroll for less time. You eat better foods because it doesn't quite feel right. When you're saying I'm eating this bag of jalapeno cruncher chips for you, <laughs> Feels much more appropriate when you're saying that while drinking watermelon juice or a bowl of walnuts and bananas and a little bit of honey, my new favorite snack. But if you don't walk into the next room, if you don't take the next breath without having the thought, here, God, I'm doing this for you. I'm breathing for you. And you know you're not. He's doing all of these things. But this practice, it helps you to become aware of that. If you've been trying to figure out how to stay aware of love, this is one way. Make it your job like St. Therese. She said, oh Jesus, my love, my vocation. I finally found my vocation. It is love. That's my job. I took the position before I got here. You did too. We're learning the ropes. Our only rope is prayer, which can appear as mantra. Sometimes it can appear as listening for the silence. Sometimes it can appear as smiling consciously. Sometimes it can appear as what it really is. Just the simple awareness of this love all the time. It's so simple that it's easily dismissed. I've dismissed it a million times for more challenging practices, for the scenic route when I never even had to leave. I've been in paradise. I've been had a good view. You don't need a change of scenery. You just have to open your eyes and love. We're not looking anymore. We're only loving. Only loving. You feel that? Only love is here. Source Messages says this is the point in your life when things take off for you. Know the tide has been turning for a reason. Move with that knowing, shift with that balance. Your energy is providing you with leverage you've never had before. You're gonna see opportunities you've never seen before and you're gonna say, here God, I'm doing this for you. I love you. And we'll chat soon. If this episode helped you feel good, helped you feel God, then leave a review on Apple Podcasts and screenshot it and send it to me for a free gift and follow me on Patreon so I can see you, so I can see your smile.